welcome everyone and start off this uh, meeting of the, it's a Blue Water Park Water System Community Information Meeting. So my name is Steph Short. I'm the committee's coordinator. I'll be facilitating and our director of engineering, Patrick Graham, will be providing a presentation. Patrick, can you wait? There he is. Our uh, chief financial officer, Kristen Watson, will be providing financial information. There she is. And we have Councillor. You just blocked out. How are we doing now? Yeah. Okay. Good. And we have Councillor Morris, who is the uh, council liaison for all of the water committees. Um, and from the local advisory committee who donates their time and efforts constantly, we have our chair, Rob Dufty, who is on black screen because he's uh, in a car. And we have uh, Jerry Kane. Did have, there he is. Hi, Jerry. Thank you so much for all you do. Um, a couple procedure notes. I'll be muting you for background noise. So if you'd like to speak, please don't forget to unmute yourself. You're welcome to speak throughout the meeting, ask questions or comments throughout the meeting. That's the kind of approach we're taking. And um, don't be afraid to put your questions in the chat if you'd like to. Okay, let's give it a go. Our, we'll have a presentation from Patrick Graham, the Director of Engineering. Thanks, Patrick. Okay, hi everybody. Um, just a short, um, a short presentation updating everybody on what's gone on since we last met just just a few months ago uh, with the uh, water system improvements project. Um, so the first part, can everyone see my screen now? Yeah. I'd show mode. Yeah. Okay. So um, the first you part. Want to Slideshow mode. I could try that. Oh, that's fine the way you have it. Yeah. So there's uh, as you know, two, two main components to the water systems improvement project. One is upgrading water supply to um, uh, close the gap between uh, supply and demand in the blue water service area. And the other component is um, upgrading and uh, replacing the um, aging um, water distribution system. So in terms of the water supply upgrade, we've been working on that um, throughout this year. Since we last spoke, we made um, a lot of progress, essentially completing tender documents um, for the Bowen Bay well upgrades and the system interconnection. And so that, that's ready to go. Um, and uh, the pre-tender construction cost estimate is about 650,000. Um, a portion of the money has been spent already on design work. Um, so we could tender and construct um, before next summer, which was the whole intention going back to last year. Um, <clears throat> and so really the main update is that we've we're ready to go, but we've put the tendering on hold uh, pending review of another uh, recently discovered supply option. Um, so uh, Ian Stewart, who I noticed was on the call here, um, has been um, per re recently purchased the, uh, the approximately 50 acre subdividable property in the Blue Water Service area and uh, has been um, working on addressing the water supply for, for his development and then also um, the broader blue water area. And he did discover with the recent well drilling a, a very high productivity well, um, approximately uh, 50 US gallons per minute based on the well drillers report. Um, and he's uh, planning pumping tests in the near future in the next, next few for comparison purposes, that's you know similar magnitude to the the total combined capacity of of the upgraded Bowen Bay wells that that we were planning. Um, I believe he uh, drilled a, a couple of other wells worth that were in the more in the three U.S. gallon per minute range, which is more typical for what we were expecting for for wells in this area. So this is really. Um, um, uh, quite significant. 
So then that really brings up the question about whether um, <clears throat> whether to proceed with the Bowen Bay well upgrades now or um, to rely on um, development of, we'll call it the Stewart well, um, which would provide a similar amount of water supply uh, to address the supply deficiency. Um, so there, there's um, a, a fair amount of work that's required. In addition to development of the well itself, there's also a need to connect um, to the, the King Edward Bay Reservoir Tank um, with a fill line and distribution main. Um, and the timing is a lot more uncertain than it is for the, the current project, the, the Bowen Bay um, Well Optimization Project. Um, it relates to the timelines for, uh, for Ian subdivision um, and also for phase four of our Butis Ridge. So it's, it is unlikely, or well, there wouldn't be a water supply solution in place um, uh, using this approach before summer of 2024, certainly, and um, you know, possibly the following year. Um, it really depends on um, the timeframes for the subdivision projects. Um, the advantages, of course, for deferring the uh, Bowen Bay Wells project would be um, cost savings, not, not spending that money that was earmarked for that project, construction of that project. Um, and the other advantage is that uh, the additional water supply for Blue Water Park uh, is provided within within the service area, uh, which um, gets us away from a number of complications that we're running into, um, as you know, with um, the solution spanning multiple service areas. Obviously, the, the advantage of proceeding with the Bowen Bay Wells um, at this time is that we'll have the water supply issue addressed before next summer. Um, and then there's also resiliency of adding um, some substantial additional water supply from different Sorry. aquifers. So from the Bowen Bay. Yeah, no, I'm listening to the water meeting. Wells and uh, from, from uh, the Stewart Well, which is closer to um, Blue Water Park Wells. So those would be the advantages. Uh, at, the, at the moment, we're, we're like, I guess the decision point on that would be following uh, Ian's um, pumping tests to really demonstrate what the sustainable yield of, of this well is. Uh, the number, the 50 gallons per minute is, is based on a well driller's um, report, which um, isn't, um, you know, isn't the same thing as testing the well for, for a 72 hour period and monitoring nearby wells and uh, uh, really understanding what the supply is. Um, so, and then in terms of the other component of the project, the water main and I call it the water main and culvert replacements, because there are a number of integrated culverts that have to be done at the same time. Um, we've, uh, that, that is also on track. Um, I can come back to this map if we need to look at anything. Um, but the, uh, the design for the water mains and culverts is underway, um, and we expect to be at a point of having uh, tender documents for the for the phase one water mains anyways by by the end of October, um, possibly early November, and then uh, tendering the you know the latter part of this year for um, construction of phase one um, in uh, the first half of 2024. Um, and then the, the previous plan was, that we would proceed with phase two water mains uh, in the summer of 2023. 20, um, that should say 2024 there, that, that bullet. Um, where it doesn't seem likely that we'll need additional well exploration. Um, the previous plan was to complete phase two, evaluate the effectiveness of the, the well optimization and system interconnection and then make a decision on proceeding with phase three water main upgrades in 2025. Um, and if necessary, diverting some of the funds that have been borrowed to additional well exploration and development. 
Um, given what's transpired with um, the exploration on, on Ian's property, I, I don't think that that um, decision points is going to need to come to pass. And so it, we, we would have the option of looking at combining the phase two and three um, water mains um, for uh, construction in you know the second half of 2024, um, or they could possibly be phased over 2024 and 2025 as as we'd previously planned. That's a decision we can we can look at um, when we get closer to that point. Um, and so that's that's the summary of of where we're at and uh, what's uh, what's transpired. Uh, where we're headed. So if there's any questions, um, I welcome your questions. Can we go back to the full screen? Not so we can see everybody. Stop sharing. Okay. Stop the slideshow. There we go. Check. I don't see any questions in the chat. Oh, there's one, Councillor Morris. Um, and, uh, I'm remind me, Patrick, if you would, about why what what's the significance of phase four of our Butus Ridge with respect to the timing and everything? Um, well, they there's um, between where Ian's well is is, is and the King Edward Bay tank, um, there needs to be a fill line and a distribution, you know, going to yeah. the tank and then a distribution main coming back to feed the ins properties as well as the broader blue water system. Um, that would be in a common trench. Um, a portion of that um, section of, of main would is on uh, Ian's property. And then there's a portion that's on the um, Arbutus Ridge property. And so we would need right of ways, easements, and uh, cooperation from um, the uh, Arbutus Ridge developers. Um, and the easiest way to secure the right of ways would be in conjunction with the phase four subdivision. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Does anyone else have a question for Patrick? I'm not sure how to put my hand up. But... Okay, go ahead, please. Thank you, Ian. Um, just, uh, I'd been sending notes to Patrick, but he was um, away last weekend, so um, I didn't give him any, any further updates, but yeah. um, to this date, We've ordered um, all the recording equipment for the for the wells, and that's coming. I think it's coming tomorrow. And the well for the well pump for for that well should be in in about a week and a half. Um, at which time the parts need to be assembled, and the the plan would be to go ahead with that test in in earlier or uh, mid-October, which I think, from my understanding, is the proper time of year to test. Um, we're bringing a well that, a pump that's um, a, a big pump and uh, with the ability to be able to slow it down if we want to. So it, um, we should get a, a good reading on, on what that well is um, in mid-October. Um, with regards to the water main up through the property, um, I have not yet commissioned um, Creus to do that design work for us for that water main. Patrick, maybe you could enlighten me on whether or not the urban systems has done any work on that or not. Uh, no, they haven't. They're just looking at the... Um... The replacement and upgrading of the blue water, of the current blue water system, and they would also be looking allowing for the tie-in um, of a future main coming down from the King Edward Bay tank through through your property. Um, 
but that's the extent of their um, their current role. In, okay. Well, in what the, what I can do is is get on with Creus and uh, and the design of that water main, which I remember from the drawings was supposed to be like a ten inch or something. Um, and see if we can't get going with that. I don't know how long it takes to to do the drawings for for that sort of work, but um, yeah, I can I can do what I can control, which would be from that connection up through the well area and then up to the end of where our property ends. Um, if if that's helpful for you guys, yeah, it's definitely helpful. Anyway, we'll we'll know in a couple, maybe three weeks, what comes out of the hole. There are two other holes that we drilled, but weren't very good. One was three gallons a minute down on kind of the west end of Schooner Lane, and then another one that we drilled um, further east on the property um, at the end of um, an existing roadway that was built by the previous owners. So I was trying to spread them out, but that one, we went down 500 feet for the one on East Schooner to get three gallons. And we went 500 feet um, further east on the property and got three and a half gallons. And then the one in the middle was the, was the good one. So anyway. Thank you for sharing that information. Ian. that's really helpful. Yeah. Does anyone, uh, our chair, Rob, would you, do you have something to offer? All right, thanks, Steph. I uh, just wanted to uh, thank um, Patrick and Ian for bringing uh, this, this different option to the table here to, for consideration. And um, I think definitely it is a uh, cause for pause just to look at all available options on the table and uh, uh, make sure that we analyze what uh, eventually will be best for for the community and everybody involved. So, so thanks again for all that. Uh, got a couple few questions here for, um, for you, Patrick and, and Kristen as well. First off, the Arbutus Ridge phase four you talk about, when is that um, anticipated to proceed with? And I'm presuming that's the, the additional storage tank that will go above the uh, existing King Edward Bay tank. And are they drilling an additional well as well? Maybe I know that you had brought, mentioned that briefly in the last community meeting. Maybe just reiterate on that again, if you could. You're on mute. They they are planning a, a, another tank um, higher up, uh, and also uh, um, another well. Um, I don't know that they've how far they've proceeded on exploration of where that well would go. Um, and I'm, I'm not really sure um, what their time frame is. I mean, that's part of the challenge is, I think they're, they're maybe not selling their phase three lots as, as quickly as they might have wanted to. And uh, that's maybe slowed things down a bit. Um, but I, I they have been in touch, like they've 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 reached out and they they want to organize a meeting with with us and with Ian and and their and, and their team um, to um, to really talk about this this whole integrated project. Um, so I, I think there's um, and there may be opportunity to um, uh, to advance construction um, of the water main that's needed earlier um, than, than it might otherwise be if it was just for the subdivision itself. Um, so we'll, we'll be meeting with um, the Arbutus Ridge folks and, and, and Ian in, in, the, uh, in the near future to, to talk about that. But I don't have a specific time frame for, and that's part of the, you know, <laughs> With the with the Bowen Bay plan that we've been talking about for ages now, you know everything was within our control in terms of um, the timing of the work and when we'd have 
the supply online. And um, that's one of the issues with um, this, this other approach is that there's, there's, there's variables that rely on others, others timeframes. Thank you. Okay, thanks. Um, another, I guess, couple more questions. Um, I think Fireflow has uh, been a topic of conversation amongst the community, uh, increase to insurance rates um, by uh, some have started to experience the the fire at uh, in Tunstall Bay at, uh, on that house uh, earlier this summer. Um, and, I, and there was some questions asked and communications at the last community meeting about the whether there's a need for an additional tank on the Blue Water Mutiny Lane end or whether the tankage that is proposed for and currently in the King Edward Bay area, whether that will then provide the sufficient fire flows for the increased development that uh, we're looking at here as well as uh, encompassing all the west side as well. So I think that's going to be a, um, something that will will have to be taken a closer look at. Um, the other thing is the connection of the uh, Bowen Bay, the wells in Bowen Bay with the flow line and the optimization. Um, is that still on the table at some point to to be um, to be bringing in to make the system even more resilient? And how do you see that unfolding in the future, potentially? I guess there was two questions there. Um, with regards to the fire flow, that is something that we're, we're working with urban systems currently on the, the design of the upgraded system. And they are looking at that question about if we do have a main um, through Ian's property to connect up to the blue water system, does that then do away with the need for a new blue water reservoir? And, and I believe it does. Um, and uh, so that's that's a big advantage, um, be able to provide fire flow that way. Uh, but that has to be confirmed. Um, and then, uh, sorry, your other question was, um, oh, just the, the future interconnection okay. of the, the wells in Bowen Bay uh, still with the flow line and that and how that how that would be proceeding in the future. If an, this alternative uh, presentation here is something that is going to be um, followed, followed up with, um, there still is, uh, I think, an ex some expecta expectations of a fully resilient um, all three of the West Side water systems tied together for for um, for coverage back and forth for everybody. Yeah, that certainly is, um, you know, the most resilient and um, uh, most resilient system would be um, bringing Ian's well online for the um, through a, a common supply source through the King Edward Bay tank, as well as the uh, the Bowen Bay wells. Um, and so, I mean, that's something that, um, you know, that's one of the options is, is to proceed with that work now as we planned. Um, it could be deferred. Um, it, it would, you know, it would be the next, it's ready to go. It would be the next um, option that you would reach for if the, you know, the if and when the need arose for, for, for more water. Um, I, I don't know what the answer is about what we do, um, whether we proceed with that now and spend the money on the Bowen Bay wells and interconnection and have a really have the best and most resilient system that we can right away. Um, or if we want to um, uh, save some funds and defer that work, um, that's, um, that's really the the decision that we have to make. Yeah, and and because we're we're in a little bit of a pause mode right now, just to see how this um, new new revelation of of potential water pans out here in the coming months, um, that does give us some time to dialogue a little bit more about what what the future for the whole west side is going to look like, that kind of thing. And I think that uh, comes into play too. And as we we talk more about the operating cost model. Kristen, um, those kind of 
um, upfront discussions and future discussions that we still have to make on on those on those parts as well too. Um, I guess a cr question for you, Kristen, is how much have we spent so far out of blue water reserves, as well as have we dipped into the the um, uh, blue water line of credit? We could call oh, it. Yeah, that's <laughs> actually a great uh, way. Let, I, let's use that terminology going forward because we're all comfortable with it. We have a three point one million dollar line of credit to draw upon. We've drawn upon none of it. Um, to date, our expenditures on this have, is less than twenty thousand dollars, but we do we have committed to um, um, a contract with Urban Systems, which is um, un unfolding right now, and that I think is about a hundred thousand dollars that um, we're paying for the design. Is that right, Patrick? Um, we we've spent more than twenty thousand on on design work for for this well, project. Maybe the bills just haven't hit the DL yet. I'm... Yeah, uh, it's closer to um, um, might be closer to sixty. Okay. The total design fees that have been spent so far. So we got some bills that are in the system right now that haven't been paid. So that makes sense. Um, but overall, we have committed to a, a contract with them that is in the neighborhood of about a hundred and ten. I think is the number in my head. Yeah, it, it would be, um, I mean, that the remainder of that contract would be put on, would be deferred as well. So um, we're not committed to that. We, we would, you know, we have their services during construction included as part of the contract, which obviously we wouldn't be um, paying for if we're not proceeding with the construction at this time. Great. So there's no um, there's no drawdown then on any of that debt. So there's no interest uh, being uh, paid by the residents in Blue Water that we anticipate this year. So that's great news. Um, any of those uh, calculations that we showed in previous um, meetings, I actually have one slide up. If I'll just bring it up quick. Um, I think you're looking at my screen where it shows that we had planned to do some progressive borrowing. So overall, the $3.1 million is, is still our upper limit cap. But because we are basically putting all of this on hold, what we can do is kind of take this expenditure plan and shift it out, kick it out one extra year. So uh, when we do the budget, the capital budgets this year with the LACs, um, I think we'll probably just show kind of the same timeline for expenditures. I mean, Patrick, is there any reason that we can't get started on some of the um, water main replacement work? Um, yeah, we can, and we are we are proceeding with that as planned. Okay. Um, we're we're not going to be doing we're we're not on track to do any construction until 2024, beginning of 2024. So it wouldn't be. This year would be strictly design costs. Okay. And the design yeah. timeline is how many, like about a year to get those drawings done or what do you think? No, um, like I said, it's uh, looking at November. Um, well, for, for the first phase anyway, um, to have the drawings by November and then the, um, the remaining phases in early 2024 okay. for the um, design work. And then maybe going to tender in the spring kind of thing? Um, well, maybe going to tender for for, for phase one at, at the beginning of the year, and then a subsequent phase is either yeah, later in the year and, and possibly the following year. Okay, so um, we, we can expect that we'll start getting into that money and start um, spending it, not for the uh, well part of the project, but for the the water main replacement part. We'll start working on that in um, 2024. Yeah. yeah, looking at your presentation, Patrick, you've got tender documents for phase two and three by end of 2023. And then there is the consideration depending on how things pan mistake. out. Um, so is that 2024 that you're saying tender documents for phase two and three? Is that what um, you're saying now? No, I, I think um, th that's 
that's doable. Um, it might be might be a bit later and that might be early 2024, but the, the, the design work is well underway. We're just yeah. Yeah. waiting for some, sur some more survey now. Um, it, it's, um, yeah, the design is, um, it, it will be done in the next few months. Um, and it's really the phasing of construction that's gonna be, um, you know, a, a discussion about, um, or in decisions about um, how much we want to do and and when. Yeah, and I guess some of the advantages, we'd have to look at the advantages, disadvantages, but from an advantage point of view, definitely if you're, if you're throwing out a larger contract for tender, um, there's probably a bigger appetite to grab onto it by contractors bidding on it. Um, you save on MOB, DMOB costs, those kinds of things. So there, there could be some, um, some cost savings realization by having a much larger project for them to, to go after too. So, and that, that does from an advantage for the community, um, especially along Windjammer, gets all the mains upgraded to the, the fire flow requirements that we need um, and starts putting together those pieces of the puzzle that at some point we could hopefully be pushing back with the insurance companies, not do not raise our insurance rates as much as they would like us to get them up there. So that could be another advantage just for us too. It is an option to, to tender everything at once. Um, uh, uh, it's not one we've, um, we talked about previously, we talked about phasing it. Yeah. Um, but that, you know, that's something we can look at. Yeah, and, and I think that's going to be more coming into play. I guess our next meeting's in December, where you'll have a better understanding of the, um, of the uh, where the tender package is at, the design, everything like that. And um, uh, be more of a, you'll have more on the table to discuss at that point by the time we get to December, I think. Okay, um, Ian, you've got a question. Patrick, is there a is there a um, an option to have a fill line that would go from from the well site to the Blue Water Reservoir? Are you guys replacing that main along there, or would that be an option to you know have a little bit more defined timeline for getting the water to to at least a use? In a, you could. I, I, I think it's probably um, the, the main issue with that is it doesn't blue water reservoir is quite small and it, it's not um, it's a much bigger advantage to have your supply going into a reservoir that's adequately sized for fire protection flows and is uh, um, like the central hub for water distribution to to all the systems. Um, but it, it is, you could do that. Um, seems to me like it would be like the requirement would be three more valves in the ground. So, uh, basically a T connection and, and if you wanted it to go to, to King Edward Bay, you'd open that one and shut the other. I just wondered if yeah. there was an option to move the water that way. Now that we've found it, we don't know how much, but you know, there's certainly some there. Significant yeah. amount. It's something we can look at. Is yeah, there an is there an option to build a new reservoir, Patrick? Well, that that was the the um, in, in terms of the, the longer term phased upgrades for for Blue Water, mm -hmm. um, a new reservoir near the existing one was part of that plan. Um, you know, and, and, and the main driver for that was that um, getting fire flow to the upper end of Blue Water from the King Edward Bay tank wasn't feasible without, you know, a, a dedicated main. Um, and the cost, you know, the cost of a dedicated main was significant, um, which led to, okay, the reservoir is maybe a better investment. Um, but if we can achieve fire flows to the whole system without building a new reservoir, because those are big expenses, um, that would be um, 
that would be preferable. Yeah, I think phase four discussions is to the tune of about 1.9 million for uh, a brand new reservoir um, in in the Mutiny Lane area where the current smaller 82,000 liter reservoir is sitting. So, but then then it's the appetite of do you want to have over storage, not just for fire flow requirements, but making sure that we've got an abundance of water stored to help bridge some of the drier months of the year. Uh, I know it's 135,000 gallon tank, fairly large, but does start getting up used up quite quickly in the summer months when people are watering that kind of thing. And and the seasonal and um, um, uh, short term rentals are at their busiest in the summer months, um, all all vying for for water. So, but that is a big, uh, big chunk of, uh, of uh, money expenditure for something like that in the future. And I think that would be an expectation from the community to rigorous, rigorously go after um, grant funding before we went down that road potentially. Thank you, Rob. Um, are there any other questions from community members? Can you remind oh, me how big the existing storage tank is in blue water? Uh, it's 82,000 liters. 82,000. What's that in gallons? Yeah. Oh, divide. Mm -hmm. US, divide by US, four. Yeah, okay. Divide by four as an average. How's that? So yeah. 21,693. So yeah. not really enough for one house fire. It, no, because that, and that's a good thing to bring up, um, Allison. Um, the house fire that we had in 2006, uh, just down the street from me, pretty scary. Um, it used almost 50,000 gallons to fight that fire. Um, the next fire in 2013, I don't know what the stats are in it because by that point we were hooked to King Edward Bay. So it was drawing out of the 135,000 gallon tank uh, in King Edward Bay. Um, but probably used a similar amount. And I'm not sure, do you have any statistics on this latest Tunstall fire? Patrick, you know that yet? You muted, you Patrick. I don't know off the top of my head. Um, yeah. It was a substantial amount. Yeah, because they, they did put um, uh, the community on notice to conserve water for the tank to recharge. So that that also then opens up about even Bowen Bay. Uh, it's got even smaller water storage, I believe, than than the blue water tank. And um, uh, so that puts it as an, in a vulnerable state too to not even be able to fight a, a single fire a house fire and keep it from spreading. And the realization is, is that, yeah, the house is probably probably doomed, but the the more important part for our fire department, uh, which do a wonderful job to uh, uh, keeping it from spreading to other parts of the community, to other houses, or potentially into uh, a wildfire situation. I think that's, especially of what we've seen here in West Kelowna, um, the risks up in uh, Northwest Territories, the, the horror stories that we heard would happen in Lahaina on um, Maui Island. Um, it's, it's definitely woken a lot of people up, even about uh, how we're able to even um, uh, keep under control some sort of a fire and then, of course, the, the whole questions about evacuation routes, everything like that. The NERP community is talking more again, keeping uh, keeping the communities updated as much as uh, we can on that, too. Thank you, Rob. I've got a question regarding the insurance underwriter um, from the chat. What year would fire flow requirements upgrade be completed for Captain's Way to satisfy the insurance underwriter writer's database? Sounds like an Allison question. No. No. Patrick? Depends no, on, um, Kristen. Depends on on um, getting the water mains upgraded, which that could be as soon as, as the end of 2024. Um, and also, um, depending on which end of um, Captain's Way, it might also require the new main from King Edward Bay Reservoir, uh, Reservoir Tank to uh, connect down through Ian's property to, to the Blue Water System. And I don't know what the time frame from that for that would be. 
2024, 2025. Um, but I think a lot of properties would meet um, FUS requirements when the mains are upgraded. I think that's a big, uh, definitely a big positive hurdle for, for us in the community is once a lot of those mains and I believe aren't the fire fire hydrants on captain's way already hooked into the six inch main. It's just really the end that currently connects to the, um, the, the mains that come up to the boundary at King Edward Bay are, are still undersized. That is, that is planned as, as the, the next phase or the, the 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 first phase of the water main upgrades correct yeah yeah so it's possible that the fus requirements on captain's way would be met after the phase one upgrades yeah okay are there any more questions I have a note, just a reminder on the agenda package that I went out to you by email and social media regarding the different kinds of communications that we're doing. We have this quarterly community information meeting. This is our second of the quarterly ones. We have um, a sort of a news release that will follow this. It happens quarterly as well. We've got a project webpage. The link is on our agenda. Um, the the local advisory committee email address is um, bwplac at bimbc.ca. You can sign up for our mailing list on the website. And that is all oh, for communication opportunities. And, and I've been I've been reposting onto the uh, local Blue Water Neighbors Facebook group as well as the Blue Water Community. Uh, uh, water update Facebook group as well too to try and um, reach out to as many people as possible for you, Steph. Thank you so much, Rob. I've um, got another question from John. Is there an update on exploring a billing system based on year-round metering for all users? Um, that's for me. Yep, we um, had committed to moving ahead with implementation of the metered rate billing year round. Uh, we deferred it last year uh, because we expected to be fully involved in engaging down this um, initial project, which involved the optimization of the Bowen Bay Wells. Uh, there was um, uh, definitely, obviously, tons of support in Blue Water for implementation of that metered rate billing system. There was uh, less demonstrated support within the King Edward Bay local service area, and there was even less support for that within the Bowen Bay service area. Um, if if the project is moving in a way where the source is a a, a, is a, a single source in the Bowen Bay wells, then I feel pretty strongly that the metered rate billing system needs to be the same in each of those districts. Um, so I felt uh, it was just prudent to just try and hold off on that piece while we move forward with getting the, the loan authorization through and all of the other complex issues that we needed to tackle to, to get the st set the stage for moving ahead with this combined project. Now we have this other option on the table. Um, from my view, given the, the um, desperate drought conditions that we um, experienced this summer, there is really absolutely no reason not to move forward with a more um, an, um, metered rate billing system. So uh, we will be bringing that forward in all three of the districts this, um, this budget uh, um, cycle this fall. So, Yes, I expect to see it. And um, yes, I expect that council will be supportive of it, just given the um, uh, climate change and the serious drought conditions that we saw this year. Of course, I can't speak for them, but from a staff perspective, both Patrick and I will be recommending strongly that this metered rate billing system be approved in each of the three districts. Thank you, Kristen. There's and, another and maybe... question. Oh, maybe just to add to that, Kristen, that uh, we did meet um, back in uh, mid-July, uh, all the chairs of the West Side Water Committees, as well as Kristen, Liam, Patrick, uh, Allison, um, to 
to kind of brainstorm on some of the ideas and how this operating cost model would work and the volumetric metering, which we started talking to that as the coin phrase. Um, and I believe once you've got more of um, uh, a structure in place, you'd be presenting that out to to uh, the LECs that chairs a bit more and some community discussions at that point that we'd be uh, we'd be having. Correct, Kristen? Yeah, that's correct. Yep. Yeah, thank you. Um, there's a question about grants being available for Blue Water, like the Eagle Cliff grant, instead of using the line of credit. Mm. The um, I, I'll just speak a little bit about that grant. That grant that we just recently received uh, for Eagle Cliff. Um, the project, the Eagle Cliff project, is fundamentally different than the Blue Water project. The Eagle Cliff project is about addressing a water quality issue. So the the readings that we get in um, Eagle Cliff much like the readings that we used to get in Cove Bay, very high levels of, um, of turbidity, that kind of thing that, that creates a, um, a water quality issue that the grant was targeted to address. The difference in the Blue Water project is the bulk of it is um, about uh, infrastructure replacement. And higher up on the province's priority list, unfortunately, is addressing water quality before addressing infrastructure replacement when it comes to drinking water projects. So although we continue to monitor what available grant projects are out there, we, we are limited in any given year to only apply for one project. And um, we did apply for the Eagle Cliff project because we felt it had a better or a higher chance of being successful because it is it, it was targeted to that water quality issue as opposed to infrastructure replacement. Um, now that we've managed to secure that one, uh, we can now focus on looking at uh, other grant programs that might be out there um, that that the Blue Water Replacement Project would be a good candidate for and. Um, Certainly, it's it's something that we're always monitoring and always looking at is is available grant projects programs. Sorry. Thank you, Kristen. It's six fifty two. You have a few more minutes to ask any more questions. Um, as we mentioned, these are quarterly meetings, so there will be another information meeting on. Wednesday, December 6th. And as has been mentioned, the um, budget process for the local advisory committee to review the budgets will take place for the committee, but those are open for community members to view or speak in the beginning at public comments. When do those start coming up, Steph, for the LEC meetings? Do you remember? That's part of the budget timeline for this cycle, which is being um, perfected by finance staff. Yeah, okay, Rob, we're just kind of trying to schedule some things now and okay. plan it on the bigger time timeline. A lot so. of steps in the process. <laughs> yeah, and I understand yeah. that because I know that we've had some uh, meetings in in the October-ish time frame in the uh, in the past, as well as leading up to. I think your deadlines are in March of the calendar May. year too. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, May or May. Yeah. It's nicer to get them done earlier, though. I don't like leaving it that late. Oh, definitely. And working around our holidays. <laughs> um, okay. Well, John, have you do you have a last yeah. word or I think yes? My uh, Hi, my connection dropped out. Sorry about that. That's um, okay. It's easier just to say it than type it. Sure. Uh, this this well discovery on the Stewart property is such a game changer, and seems like there's potential cost savings there to the whole plan. It just makes me wonder if prioritizing well exploration um, is still something that might be thought about. Uh, I know it was further down the list with the original plan, um, but given what's happened, I'll just raise that as a, a question. I don't know if that's one you wanna to respond to or just kind of take it as a, a query for um, further thought. Yeah, I was going to mention the same thing. It, it's it is a, a great uh, a game changer, 
but we know that wells are not cheap to drill and there have been dud wells built or, or drilled on, uh, <clears throat> on <clears throat> Bowen Bay uh, and it and and that Ian has he's gotten one out of three which is not a great average and uh and there definitely are costs involved and that's and it's it's spectacular that he's uh he's so magnanimous and he's done shown that before by building the trails and uh and and giving up some of his property and it's uh, i my hat's off to him for doing that um so yeah but i i understood it was an option to go with with ian's well or the Bowen Bay Wells. I mean, why wouldn't it be a no-brainer to go with Ian? Or is there is there some kind of cost? Uh, is there there is going to be a difference in cost? That's my question. Um, there, there's a difference in timing, certainly, in that um, we were well on track with the Bowen Bay interconnection and optimization to have that up and running before next summer. Um, we won't have um, Ian's well online by then. It's going to be a longer time frame. Okay. Um, and then the other advantage of, in terms of a system resiliency, uh, having highly productive wells in the Bowen Bay Aquifer, um, and then a high, high productivity well up in this Blue Water Aquifer, as well as the King Edward Bay wells and the Arbutus Ridge well feeding into um, you know, a common supply source at the King Edward Bay tank, uh, you know, that's a very, um, uh, th that's a highly resilient system drawing from um, multiple different sources um, that, um, you know, brings a lot of advantages. Um, if you're relying on primarily on one well, um, you know, that's, that might be fine or, um, you know, things can, things can change. Um, you know, you, you never know for sure um, what's going to happen in the future. That's true. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I think to add to that, um, um, when you have multiple wells pulling out of different areas within communities, um, and the technology for managing the, the well output um, uh, whether it's a cycling process, et cetera, so that you're not overtaxing um, any, any one or a couple of wells to produce and then potentially risk the, the, the permanent damage, damage to those wells when you have it spanned over seven or eight or 10 dif different wells in areas, that provides that resiliency. And then also we look at uh, the way climate change is really affecting us then uh, drier summers for longer periods of time into the fall is October 15th, our traditional turn on the tap from the skies, rainy season start, or is it, it's starting inch uh, further out into the, into the fall months. So by having a, a larger resilience system for all of us to, to have long-term um, uh, benefits from, I think is the most important that we got to be seeking here as well too. So uh, so that that's my take on it, and uh, that because uh, um, here we are, we we thought we had this solved in 2008 when Blue Water was connected to the to the the system in King Edward Bay, and here we are, 15 years later, yeah. thrashing it all out again. So first go around didn't work, and we've got three out of four wells in Mutiny Lane that aren't viable for production anymore. So we're, we're at the end of life from a, from a Mutiny Lane point of view too. So things are changing under, underground with the aquifers too. So we, we need to be protecting it all across the west side and all of Bowen Island too and uh, promoting water conservation and, and uh, how we're protecting the water, water sources that we rely on. Thanks, Rob. So regarding conservation, there's a question about consumption. We don't have a net here, but maybe um, Kristen or Patrick might know how was the consumption going to stage three at the beginning of May? Didn't seem like too much of a hardship for the community. How did Blue Water do? I would have to look that up. I don't, um, I don't know. 
the answer to that off my top of my head. I think once once we get to um, end of uh, Q3 here, we could probably do a little bit of, and I know that uh, Annette passed on to, I think all the chairs, the the water uses for 2022 up to the end of the year. So it would be a good comparison back to see how we did. But luckily we didn't hit stage four this year. So with, with all hands on deck, conserving water and managing it uh, in an appropriate way, we didn't have to go to the extreme stage four that unfortunately places like Sunshine Coast are, are at that now. So uh, I think we did pretty good this year. Yeah, some gardens dried out. Um, people got creative in washing their vegetables in a big pan and then going out and watering their, uh, their deck plants with that. And uh, Blue Water has done this before. We, we went through the 2004 drought uh, and we were not connected to the King Edward Bay system at that time. We, we, we were asked to go from 4,500 gallons a month that summer and reduce down to an, by another 40%. So we're all struggling to, to make it uh, make do with 2,700 gallons per month. That's, that's basic household use for, for a, a decent sized family. And we did it. We, we didn't run out of water. So, and Blue Water again is proving itself that we, we, we can step up to the challenge and, and be part of the community to continue to, to um, have it strive and and um, follow through with uh, any restrictions or anything that we have put on for, on us that uh, we're we're going to follow. That's inspiring, Rob. Thank you. <laughs> we can do it. Well, so, thank you again for coming. I just wanted to say I, I I don't know the numbers in terms of the consumption, but we did have I could say that we did have less of a concern in terms of. Um, the King Edward Bay tank dropping continuously over a prolonged period like we had the summer before. So it, it was actually um, overall a better situation in terms of the supply demand balance, even though it may seem seemed like more of a drought year. So. I don't think it went below 17 and a half feet. I, I walk by it every few days. I get pictures of the uh, the, the gauge itself uh, and predominantly after the weekends it was getting down to that 17 and a half 18 foot range but by mid to end of week it was recovering back up to the 20 21 foot level so um so yeah you did see a bit of a, a, a sustained extra use during the weekends but it was recovering which was good news in my eyes and we didn't have that extreme which was probably uh, another another factor that caused us into stage four last year. Mm -hmm. Great. Okay. A comment that putting us on stage three in May was a good idea. Kept us all in smart shape. Okay. Well, thank you again. And um, as I said, in the agenda is the LAC email address, bwplac at bimbc.ca. Please don't be afraid to write with your questions and staff or um, a wise LAC member will reply to you. And we hope to see you again on December 6th. And thank you very much. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye.